Hi, I'm Robert Purchase. I'm an orthopedic surgeon in San Francisco, California, and the director of shoulder surgery at the St. Francis Orthopedic Institute. I would like to take the opportunity to present to you this video orthopedic case of the week. So MW is a 58-year-old right-hand dominant female. Now, she re originally came to see me about 10 months prior to the surgery with right shoulder pain that had been slowly getting worse over the last five years. Now, over time, she would respond to non-operative treatments, but the pain would always come back. Physical exam findings pointed to the biceps as a pain generator, as well as strongly suggesting that her subscapularis, the rotator cuff muscle in the front of the shoulder, was torn. Now, there are four rotator cuff muscles in the shoulder. There are two in the back one on the top, and the subscapularis in the front. The rotator cuff muscle on the top is called the supraspinatus and is the most common rotator cuff tendon that needs to be repaired surgically. But in this case, I thought it was the subscapularis that was damaged. Now the biceps, there are two parts of the biceps, the long head and the short head. That's why it's called the biceps, right? The short head is outside of the shoulder, but the long head starts deep in the shoulder goes across and then makes a 90 degree turn in this groove and exits between the supraspinatus and the subscapularis. Now the, the biceps doesn't want to make that sharp turn. Instead it wants to round off or cut that corner. <clears throat> um, and when it does so it creates this medial instability which is a dynamic thing meaning sometimes it's in the groove, sometimes it's out of the groove or pops out of the groove. Now, <clears throat> when it does that, when it pops in and out of the groove, it cuts through the soft tissue restraints of the shoulder, including the subscapularis. So over time, it can cause a subscapularis tendon tear. Now, what you're about to see is a preoperative MRI. It, sh it, it shows the biceps tendon in the front of the arm is that round black thing surrounded by um, the white uh, fluid. That's the biceps tendon. Now it's in the groove, but at the top of the groove, you can sort of see it sneaking out of the top right there. Now it also shows the subscapularis, which is just in front of the biceps. Now it looks abnormal, maybe not all the way torn, but definitely abnormal. Now arthroscopic findings, however, confirm my suspicions that the biceps was partially torn and the subscapularis was torn. Now this is an intraoperative video. You're looking at the cartilage of the humeral head. That's the infraspinatus, the rotator cuff muscle insertion there. We'll see uh, the supraspinatus insertion there. Now that's the biceps that we're looking at, and I'm looking down at the subscapularis, and that looks abnormal. Now, <clears throat> these are a couple still shots of the abnormal and partially torn biceps. Now this photo here highlights one of the challenges of subscapularis tears. And that is that they're not all that obvious at the time of arthroscopy, like a supraspinatus tear is. Instead of retracting away from its insertion, subscapularis tears tend to fold down from where they belong, almost like my pants do when I don't wear a belt. Now, I think this photo here shows the torn tendon more clearly. It's much later in the case where I have sutures in the torn subscapularis, and I can use them to pull the tendon away from the bone to make the tear a little bit more obvious. Now, the first step repairing the subscapularis is to free up any scar tissue and, and, and to make for a better uh, bed for healing. So that's what I'm doing here. This is called the lesser tuberosity and I got to get all that soft tissue off of the lesser tuberosity so that I can get the tendon to heal back. The next thing I'll do is I'll bring in this little burr or a bone, uh, bone removal device and I'll just take the top layer of hard bone off again the idea is to improve the chances that that tendon is going to heal into that spot. <clears throat> so uh, once I've got that bone prepped the way I want it, you can see I already have the sutures in the tendon, those little blue threads there. I'm going to take those threads, I'm going to incorporate it into a suture anchor. I've made a pilot hole. That metal thing is the guide for my screw. That's the screw coming in that incorporates those sutures which are through the subscapularis tendon. And then what I'm going to do is screw that suture anchor into the pilot hole, holding those sutures that are in the tendon in place, effectively holding the subscapularis onto the bone until Mother Nature heals it there. So there you go, that's the repair subscapularis, normal humeral head, normal infraspinatus, normal supraspinatus, and back to our subscapularis. Now as long as this patient follows the post-op protocol, 
She will get a great outcome with good pain relief and return of function. Thank you for your interest.